Welcome back to Iron Destiny Props. I recently completed these two Luke Skywalker graph lexes for Chris on the RPF, and I'd like to go over the details which make them screen accurate, along with my personal Dagobah hilt. This is the main hero graph lex Luke carries on his tool belt throughout the film A New Hope, and is the weapon presented to him by Ben Kenobi at his home on Tatooine. Experienced collectors will know uh, some of this information already, but uh, for those of you who may not know, the original prop had an intact beer tab and red button, a flat-faced bezel fulmer glass eye, and straight, non-stepped brass pocket pins. The clamp on the original hilt had this distinctive raised lever and absent square washer, so the threaded pin could protrude slightly past the clamp bar. This one happens to be uh, just a hair short, uh, but every vintage clamp pin varies slightly in its length due to the production runs. The one detail we chose not to replicate is the RAF military stamping on this clamp bar here. We wanted to preserve these former parts without physically modifying them, so we elected to leave off that accuracy. On the real prop, uh, you can see in the reference photos that the clamp bar uprights are not deformed or bent to accept the width of the bubble strip, uh, but they're left straight and natural, which uh, leads me to assume that despite the lack of clarity in the photos, the top shoulders of the strip were filed down, uh, as you see here, in order to be clamped in place by the rails. You can see on the prototype Elstree Hilt reference photos, the bubble strip was installed similarly to this, though more crudely and carelessly. The T-Track grips I chose to do a little differently for this one. In previous builds, I used Roy's recent grip guide to cut the T-Track to length and position them on the hilt, but this time I decided to use the reference photos to align them by hand. You'll notice in the Chronicles photo, the outside edge of grip number 6 is in line with this square slot in the clamp as you see here, and these spaces are also present on the real prop, so that gives the positioning of number 5 and 7, Number four is always aligned with the F on the Graflex clamp, and really the location of grips five and three uh, are dictated by the positioning of the four uh, accurate handle rivets here. But with grips one, two, and three, uh, I have it on very reliable authority uh, that the lengths of these three and their position on the hilt are indeed accurate to the prop used in the film. The grips are mounted all the way to the bottom edge like these, and the top edge of uh, grip number two is just a hair south of alignment with the top of the square clamp slot. You'll notice in the Chronicles photo that uh, each grip has a different type of angle on uh, each end. Uh, I've tried my very best to replicate those varying angles on every grip in order to achieve that extra layer of realism. For the bottom, we went with a, a large wire vintage D-ring and a modded Wanawanga dual rivet clip with flush mount rivets to preserve the non-patent Fulmer stamping. So this is Luke's A New Hope Graflex. Now let's take a look at the one he carried in The Empire Strikes Back on Dagobah. So this is a patent Fulmer Graflex. Uh, this hilt was assembled to accurately match the one you see in all the scenes of Luke on the planet Dagobah where he meets Yoda and receives his Jedi training. It's distinctive due to the missing red button behind the bunny ear bulb clamp, which is a very noticeable detail that makes it inconsistent with the Hoth and Bespent variant props. Of course, the beer tab is missing, as is the case with almost all the Empire Graph Lexes, with the exception of some of the stunt hilts that were used, for example, in the Wampa Cave scene. The clamp features a real Otis Elevator PCB card with the distinctive gold leads and silver traces. We have the chrome tape, which hides the Graflex logo. I chose not to install the flathead screw through the lever here, uh, because I'm not seeing that modification in any of the Dagobah film scenes. Uh, that is accurate to the ranch saber, uh, but that clamp was not used in any film footage to my knowledge, so I left off that mod. However, there are many in the prop community who have screen-matched the lower half of the ranch Graflex uh, to several behind-the-scenes on-set photos in The Empire Strikes Back uh, due to the way the grips are positioned on the hilt. We went with Todd's T-Track for this build and installed six vintage calculator screws harvested from separate TI Exactor 19 calculators. Both these sets of screws and uh, these flathead screws are all flush-cut, in order to avoid the need to drill the flash gun. Uh, 
I oriented the drive heads and positioned the grips according to the ranch saber in order to be accurate to the one in the film. An interesting detail to note is the patent fulmer stamping on this bottom plate is a one-to-one match to the ranch saber. A nice happy accident that it happened to be manufactured with the same stamping orientation as the screen used ranch bottom. This is a real kobold clip and vintage popped rivets to give the illusion of it being drilled, but uh, this is merely glued on flush. So that is the Dagobah Graflex. Let's take a look at the Bespin Cloud City variant. Now, this is probably the most highly sought-after Graflex among Star Wars prop collectors. Uh, for many, it's considered the holy grail of Graflexes due to the climactic and epic duel between Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader towards the end of The Empire Strikes Back. Because this prop played such a pivotal role in the story of good versus evil, uh, it really infuses this prop with an extra measure of gravity that I don't think it would have had if the story and the characters were not as well-crafted as they were. But here we have the uh, distinctive dual red buttons with the missing beer tab and smooth foamer pins. We have another vintage Otis PCB card, a uh, foamer lever with the smaller rivet and chrome tape. And we went with Todd's T-Track again, uh, but this time we oriented the grips in an idealized format and painted the vintage X-Actor screws uh, black in order to remain consistent with the original prop that you see attached on Luke's belt throughout the Bespin scenes and in several of the promo photos of Mark Hamill. And we also have a non-patent Fulmer stamped bottom with a real kobold clip and vintage popped rivets glued onto the bottom with a Wanawanga D-ring. And there you have it, Luke Skywalker's main hero Graflex lightsabers from the original trilogy Star Wars films. I'd like to thank Chris on the RPF for these two great commissions. I'm very pleased with their accuracy and how they turned out, and I trust you are as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.